painty papers. We are working on some fall painting papers. And uh, I do a whole lot of scraping. I love to scrape paint. And yes, fall colors mixed together with the greens and the reds and stuff can create mud. But if you layer it, it's not too muddy. And it actually looks kind of cool when you put more than one layer. So the medium that I am using is kindergarten schoolwork. I've got a ton of it coming in. And for some reason, a lot of these um, colors on the camera are looking much darker than they are. That ugly peach color, that's the thing with these cheap paints is you, <coughs> they're deceiving. That looked like a real orangey orange. But it's like a peach color. You know, and a lot of the greens that I use on here, they look much darker on camera than they are than they actually are so you notice that I kind of go over some of the things once in a while so yeah but the reds are awesome and those reds in those big tubes they come from Hobby Lobby and they go a really long way they go a really long way so here I am red and green but you see if you layer it it doesn't come out muddy so when you scrape paint which is one of the reasons why I love to do it you spread the color really thin so it dries really fast you know for paint dries dries fast um and these spreaders these are um for bondo for auto body work um, my husband turned me on to them because he has done auto body work and um he's a mechanic so he knows this stuff and he says why are you using a credit card because i kept splitting my credit cards in half apparently i am a violent scraper and uh you know, I was running out of heavy duty cards to use. And he goes, why don't you just get some Bondo scrapers? You get them in all different sizes. There's three different sizes in a pack. You could get them on Amazon. The link is down in my description box. I keep a bunch of um, links down there for the Amazon things that I like. Uh, I belong to the Amazon affiliate program, which means that if you click one of my links and buy something from it, I make a little commission but you don't pay any more to Amazon for it. You still pay the same price as if you went and searched for it. So it just gives me a little extra boost if you're looking for something. And all of the things down in my description box, I can vouch for, I have used it, or they are from a brand that I know and that I trust. So that's my little advertisement for the day. I don't just use fall leaf colors. I also use dark um you know, warm and cozy colors. I like those two colors together. Um, I like that reddish color. It's a folk art. Um, you know, I like the folk art paints because they do have a lot of unique colors. And look, see, I even put green on top of that and it didn't turn to mud. It just looked funky. Um, my tape is not sticking very well because it's just cheap tape that I use to tape this piece of paper down. This color was very deceiving. It looked much different in the bottle than it did when it came out. It did not look like that color. Um, so yeah, but I still like the color. It just wasn't what I was expecting. So I do use it. I do use it here and there. And again, you know, that came from like a discount store up in New England. So, you know, what do you expect? It can't be the exact. But these colors mixed with it look really nice. Um, I could see like jelly printing and stenciling with these three colors together. Who knows? Might be coming up. Might be coming up. So yeah, painting papers. All you need is something to scrape paint with. You need some cheap acrylic paint. You can get it at Walmart. I think it's like 58 cents a tube now. It used to be 50 cents. And I'd go and I'd buy like five or six tubes at a time. But it's 58 cents a tube now. Inflation. Um cheap paint and junk mail or magazines or kids schoolwork or catalog pages or cereal boxes or whatever you can raid out of your recycling bin that is a paper product you can paint on um, and I say paper product because I've never tried to make painty plastic have you have you ever made painty plastic have you ever gone and taken a water bottle out and tried to do this on it because if you could, that'd be pretty awesome. I did see a thing on the news yesterday where they are making this local <coughs> nursery has been collecting water bottles and they're making bouquets of flowers. You should see how pretty those flowers looked. And they were definitely painted in some way. I, I don't, they must've just painted them, you know, and if it scrapes, if it peels off, it peels off, but it was, they're very pretty flowers. So 
that's one thing you could do with your water bottles. I thought that was pretty cool. They're going to offer a class on it, but I'm not going to take it because it's in the city. But yeah, anyway, painting papers are a lot of fun, and um, I find it to be a wonderful way to relax, and the possibilities of it are endless. So I know that I preach this all the time, but you don't need to go and buy fancy colored or patterned paper when you could do it at home. I have a whole slew of stencils, okay? I didn't have a whole slew of stencils, but I do now. And all of the stencils I bought have been clearance at any given big box store that sells stencils, or I bought them from Amazon or from China, like um, Timu and Ally Express. I know that a lot of people are against those places, but I'm just telling you where I bought cheap stencils. And I do use some stencils in here that I got from Timu. And, um, you know, they hold up just as well. I mean, I have an expensive stencil, too, that I use here. When I say expensive, it's like five bucks. Um, and I use that on here, and I that has already torn. Like, uh, there's a piece of it that's already torn. So the quality is the same, all right? It doesn't really matter. The only difference with the cheap stencils is sometimes where the laser has cut, it doesn't cut the little piece of plastic all the way. So I'll just take a little pokey tool and poke it through. But I've been using my cheap stencils forever. And again, you know, however you feel about Timu or AliExpress, I understand and I respect your opinion. I'm just telling you where I've gotten the cheap stencils. Um, I love these papers and I love doing this. And I know when you look at this, you're like, man, that is a freaking mess. And yeah, it is. All right. <laughs> it's a mess. Okay. Everything I'm painting is a mess. I'm trying out these paints. They're like an iridescent glitter paint. I got them on clearance at Michael's. Um, they were like 75 cents a bottle or something. So I thought I would try them. Um, so yeah, these are just some of the ones that I stenciled and I thought my camera was on, but it wasn't. But those, all those stencils I used, except for that um, Harlequin style, all of the other ones are from Timu. They're Timu stencils. So, you know, you don't need fancy pants stuff. And now you made me forget what I was going to say, y'all. You made me forget. Oh, so yeah, the pages look ugly, right? Like as a whole page, you're like, holy crap a moly. I got this at Hobby Lobby. I have one of these stencils available for sale for $3 if you're interested. Um, but yeah, so it does look ugly like this. But when you cut it down into pieces, it looks pretty cool. And again, these are going to be background things, so... I'll be covering them up with stuff too, you know, and you're not going to see, these aren't going to be the focal point of a project, all right? These are a splash of color, a splash of texture, um, a mix of artsy looking background things that you use to um, create art with. All right, so these are little works of art, and then you use them for creating works of art. And trust me on this, you can't get it wrong. And if it's screwed up, you just go over it again in a different color or with a different stencil. And you could use the jelly plate, and I do use my jelly plate. Uh, it's just hard for me to get to right now, although it won't be because I'm bringing all my stuff out. So I get to uncramp all my crap. It's all crammed in here. Not anymore. I've been lugging it out, so I'll be in my new building very soonly. Very soonly. Um, but yeah, painty papers are definitely the way to go if you are an upcycler or a repurposer like myself who likes to create things with very little expense involved. Granted, you know, I got like 45,000 bottles of paint, but I only have 45,000 bottles of paint because they were at prices I can't refuse. All right, I go to my local creative reuse store. They have bottles of paint 99% of the time. They're new bottles. So I buy them there, you know, for 50 cents or 25 cents a bottle. I get them on clearance at different stores. I get them on, um, I get them from Walmart, you know, when I'm missing, when I need a color, like I'm almost out of my dark blue. I'm almost out of my dark purple. So I'm going to need a color. This is another form of painting papers I love to do. I make all these squares and rectangles and it's like a blocky looking page. And I didn't 
um, embellish many of these because I'm not, you know, there's, I have ideas for some of them that I don't know if I will be able to do if I stencil and stuff. So you're not going to see me do a whole lot of mark making on these, but I assure you, if you watch my channel in the future, you're going to see some videos of what I do with these papers and some of them come out really cool. So yeah, this is relaxing to me, making these rectangles. Um, I don't usually do it on large sheets like this, believe it or not. I typically do it on book pages. So they're small, um, but this works out well because I could cut them down and, and use them and whatever. But a lot of times I take black and I outline each square. So to kind of separate them, and I didn't do that. I'm just telling you that I usually do that because then you have an idea of something you could do. And it's kind of like 70s looking, you know, they used to have prints like that in the 70s. So I kind of like that look, but I also like doing it this way and then doing something on top of it and cutting it down and just having a mix of colors on something with marks or stenciling or, you know, stamping or whatever on top. <coughs> now, I had to, I had to limit, you know, where do you start and stop with these things? So, um, I do stenciling. I don't use any of my stamps. Like I have a lot of homemade stamps and I don't use them because I really can't get to them right now. Again, I'll be able to soon. So this is also like gritty, squarey. This is what I do with the excess colors when I don't want to make another sheet with it. And I really like these and I got really into doing these the other night off camera where I just took colors and literally just flung it on the paper like this and didn't even, you know, no rhyme or reason to it just to fill the white space. And that was a lot, a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I had fun with that. So yeah, I recommend that if you're looking for something kind of brainless, you know, like like a Zentangle, you know, it's kind of like, it kind of does that to my brain, like a neurographic doodle. Um, painting squares and rectangles does that for me. So, um, you really can't get any of this wrong. Like I said, you could cover up whatever you don't like. I decided to do this one in bright fall colors. It reminds me of the New England um, foliage. And no, not all of my lines are straight. Not all of my lines are perfect, but that is so fine. It's so all right. I promise it is going to be okay. Not all of my lines are painted, you know, with a perfect edge. That's why you can, you know, uh, outline it in a pen or um, in paint or whatever you want to outline it in. Washi tape even, why not? So you could do whatever. But these, these grid papers are a lot of fun. And, I, you know, I'm kind of like enjoying watching myself paint them. Does that make me weird? Does that make me weird? And I do have water to rinse my brush. And you can't really tell in these pictures, but there, there's some mixing going on. And I really don't care one bit. And why don't I care, you ask? Because there's no telling at this point what I will use this specific piece of paper for but I'm sure I will alter it somehow. And again, if you want to know what I'm going to use this paper for, you're going to have to watch my videos and find out. I'm going to be using some of these in my following journal, um, especially my blood drip ones that you saw last week. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, this is, and doing this, like I love doing this with these freaking paints. Just making a mess on a sheet of paper like this but it looks so good like I don't know if it looks like I don't know if it looks that good on video but it really does it would be really cool made into die cuts or cut into a tag or for anything for anything for a background for a collage um to mix with other things it's really they come out really cool and again I could stencil and you know one thing I do like to do is I like to paint this like this and then stencil with the jelly plate so who knows maybe I'll do that this is my dry brush it's very br like not brittle but crunchy like and it I, I use it for my dry brush I got it at Walmart in the hardware section for a dollar fifty I got three different sizes 
And I don't know if it was a dollar fifty for all three or a dollar fifty each. I don't remember. But either way, that's pretty stinking cheap, okay? Pretty stinking cheap. And you can do a lot of cool textures with it. So I'm going to do some mark making. You're going to watch me do some mark making here with this brush and a sponge and some stencils. And, uh, you know, I do. I get, I get some mark making done. I just don't get as much done as I want to. But again, just, you know, keep an eye out on my channel. Click that notification bell so you can see what kind of mess I make with these papers because it is messy. I'll tell you what. I'm sorry for the noise. I'm in a parking lot waiting for my husband. And um, this is a busy little store for being out in the middle of nowhere. So this looks, this comes out cool, and it, it comes out even cooler when you do it with a bunch of colors. I just did it with the metallic bronzy color and with this um, yellow because the yellow originally mixed in with the bronze. And um, I liked how it looked, so I continued on with the yellow. So, yeah. And I don't, I've had people ask me about, you know, if I stick to matte paint or glossy paint, I don't stick to anything. Um, I use metallics. When you do that grid painting, it looks really cool when you do it in all metallics. See, this is the stencil I bought that was expensive. And if you look in that bottom right-hand corner, that's a tear in it. So it doesn't really seem to matter much, okay, what you pay for. Uh, but anyway, the grid painting in the metallic -y colors comes out really cool. I've done that on book pages. And then with the book page text in the background, it, it's really neat. Um, so I do a lot of dabbing of this um, paint through here. And I do some very gentle wiping. All right. I have torn a lot of stencils by violently scrubbing the, the sponge or brush or, um, you know, dauber or whatever I'm using too hard against the stencil and I, I've torn them and warped them and whatever bent little pieces so I just try and be careful see like I'm just kind of lightly doing it right there even though I'm shaking the camera I promise it's not that heavy I promise but I love this stencil I love this stencil um I forget who but somebody recommended it to me and I bought it off of Amazon um I will leave a link for this stencil down below too, although I don't think it's the exact same stencil. I don't think they have it anymore, but there is one that's exactly the same thing. So yeah, you could get it. And the thing I like about this stencil is this 12 by 12. This is the biggest one I own. It's the only 12 by 12 stencil that I own. So yeah, um, you could use it anywhere. And it is good quality. It is, you know, nice. But it's not much different. It's not much different than the cheap ones. It's really not. Um, I couldn't. I didn't know what color to do on this one, so I decided to go with an ivory color. And uh, sorry, neighbors apparently know each other over here or something. Um, and it comes out nice. I like the ivory. I like the way it looks. I also like to take the sponge and blend colors so it leaves cool, like you know, multicolored, swirly-looking designs. And I like the way the sponge works and leaves like little sponge marks. It's fun. It's fun. So I decide to use up what's left of the ivory on here and, you know, spots on this paper, spots on another paper. You know, the you, you don't have to do the whole page. You know, do a couple of sections in one, one stencil. Do a couple of sections in another stencil. And, you know, do a corner here or... A, a round circle area here or whatever whatever you decide to do man this is a busy little hardware store for being out in the middle of nowhere I'll tell you um, stenciling is like one of the coolest ways to to add something beautiful very simply to a paper um, I'm just using the rest of the paint left on this brush <coughs> so that's all that's what I was doing um, but I also, I like to stencil mostly with ink. I don't do it a whole lot with paint because of the bleed through. So I try and be really gentle when I do it with paint. And I do have some bleed through on some of the pages that I do. And I'm sure you'll see that with some of the different stencils that I use. Um, but I, you don't get that as much with ink because it's drier and it's not as um, heavy to use. But don't discredit the paint factor for stenciling and stamping and stuff because 
you can still get some great things using paint through a stencil, but I, you know, I just usually prefer using ink, but on the darker pages too, paint shows up much better than ink. There aren't a whole lot of inks that show up on a dark background like this one here. Um, you know, very few inks will, will show up nicely or as vibrantly as paint will. Um, but you know, play, screw around with the stencils and the things that you have. Um, you know, if you own them, play with them and don't go buy fancy things. Use what you got, buy cheap stencils, keep an eye out for discounts and deals, dollar stores, um, clearance at the craft stores. I've gotten a lot of great stencils on clearance at my local craft stores. And, um, you know, they're some of my favorite stencils to use. And remember too, like, you have options like stamping and all kinds of things. If you're not one for stenciling, you don't even have to. Um, for instance, right now, I'm not one for stamping. Um, not because I don't like to stamp, but because I'm, I'm not really set up in a, a you know, my stamps are kind of buried a little bit and it's kind of hard to get at and I don't really have room to have stencils and stamps out. So I tend to go for the stencils first. However, you know, that's going to change <clears throat> now that I'm, now that I'm getting, uh, situated in my new, my new facility, my new crafting facility. I am now getting myself moved in and organized. So soon I might be able to actually do some crafting in there. Um, but I am having a whole lot of fun with the Halloween colors. Um, I do, you know, but I just really wish I used some neon and some bright green. I forget that bright green is like a, you know, Halloween booger gutsy color, but you know, there's always next time. I could always make more. I have plenty of papers to paint on and I have plenty of paint to use on them. So, and paint just keeps showing up. So this is my stencil binder. I left this in the video so you could see. Um, those are page protectors. I have some that have that were that had dividers in them in the actual page protector and then I have a lot of mostly full sheets and I just put a sheet of white paper in and put so I could put a stencil on each side and see it. A lot of them have more than one stencil in it. I love these square ones. I love these square stencils um, but they just don't show up great. I really wish they did show up great. I guess it's just because some of those spots in it are so intricate. Like you're going to see if they're, they show it's beautiful, but you don't get the whole design on some of those little squares. I do have another stencil that makes squares like this. And that one has like, it shows up much better, the actual designs. And yes, my stencils are filthy. I know that I have to clean them. Usually like I'll get sick of the crud on them. And typically it's when I'm jelly printing because um, it sticks to the gel plate, but I'll get sick of the crud and then I'll take them all in and, and hose them down. But, you know, I don't like to scrub at them or anything because I don't want to rip at the intricate little flappies and flippies on them. So, you know, I'm kind of gun shy to do that. But see, it like doesn't show up a hundred percent. So I don't know, like, I don't know, but I still like it and I'm still going to use it. This I think was another cheap one, another cheap China one. See, so I'm kind of just brushing it really lightly because this has a lot of intricate little doodads that stick up and pop out, especially if you rub too hard um, with the sponge. And you don't have to use a sponge like this. You can use a makeup sponge, and I do use a makeup sponge a lot. I just don't have one here, and I actually recently ripped my makeup sponge <laughs> in half. It's like one of those round ones. So yeah, I ripped that one in half. So I got to get another one from the dollar store because I don't think I have any. I think I just have the little triangle ones, which are also fun, but they only cover a small space, much smaller space than the big round one that I've got. So yeah, it's, you know, first world crafting problems. I love these little squares though. Like look at those cute designs. Look at how cool that is. Uh-oh. I'm in my bedroom. There's a cricket in here. That means there's going to be a cricket in here all night. Yep. It's going to be it. And yes, this is a different day. I I started this voiceover on one day and now I'm finishing it like three days later because 
life, you know, life just gets in the way. But yeah, this stencil is really cool. And I got this one from China. And man, what a great quality. It's really nice and thick. It's a really nice stencil. I'm very impressed with it. Um, I need to use it more often because I, I really, I really like it. I, I could really see this being nice in a lot of different applications, not just these funky papers that I'm making. Um, but yeah, definitely loving the, the funky stencil. And, you know, I have a ton of stencils just because I'm, I'm an idiot, but you really don't need a whole lot. And you can even make your own stencils with like die cuts or masks, which is like a reverse stencil. Um, you can make them with anything. I mean, you can cut your own. I have tons of templates of things to trace onto other papers so that I can make fancy papers, but I could take those template shapes and use them as masks or other ones that would make good stencils. One of these times we're going to, we're going to play with making stencils and stuff. This is just kind of a go through of the things that I, I did and the ones I made. And we'll have to finish some of them together. <laughs>